Welcome back. This is COT Time on Plus TV Africa. Our guest on this episode is an actor and a producer. And of course, he has been nominated and won numerous awards in the industry. Let's make welcome the one and only Daniel Etim F. Young. Hey. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Thank How you is for it going? Being here. Good. Mm. Very okay. Good. I'm going to ask something because okay. I've seen your TV many times. Mm -hmm. right. And I noticed uh, one of the interviews that you had, you mentioned that you were in South Africa. So right. your journey kind of started from there. Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm also a Joburg girl, if I oh, can say so myself. It? I wanted to ask though, when you were working there, right. was it a bonus or a disadvantage being, in, being a Nigerian? Hmm, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Uh, I'd say it was both. Okay. Um, we all know what the situation is we with, do. Uh, with foreigners in mm. South Africa. And, uh, and so, yes, it was a bonus for me because, you know, this is this. I was a film student at the time and, you know, I'd auditioned for numerous roles and I was getting them. Mm. And so it was it was huge for me, the exposure, the work, the money, mm. you know, so it was really good. But at the same time, uh, the industry isn't as open to foreigners mm. as it is in other places. Mm. So, you know, from time to time you get that odd stare or, you know, mm. odd a second take on your name mm. or people just, you know, marking you for not being South African. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't overt, you know, mm. so like, there were ways around it. And, um, you know, you just get that nagging feeling, mm. you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't a problem per se. So why did you then come back? Did you not want to have your, your career you know, in South Africa, obviously, the standard of living, everything is kind of much better, sorry. But um, <laughs> um, why, why did you decide to come back if you're doing so well there? Uh, well, you know that saying, you know, East, West, home is best. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I think I had bigger opportunities here. You know, mm. I was in, I, I, I had started in Nigeria before I went to study in right. uh, in, in South Africa. Joburg? so you, Yes, in Joburg. Okay. So at the time, there was already a platform for me here. Right. You know, and I had taken a three to four year hiatus, you know, right. to go study. And then I wanted to come back to build on that. You right. know, in South Africa, I was just starting yeah. from a plain, you know, right. a platform. Mm. And also, I, I was passionate about, I am passionate about storytelling. And I had learned a lot from the culture in Nigeria already, and I had Nigerian stories in my head that mm. I really wanted to tell at the mm. time. So I, I sort of like did a comparison, and I said, you know, if, if I wanted to start telling those stories in my head, it would, it would be better for me to come to Nigeria to start mm. rather than, you know, start to build on the new culture I was immersed in at right. the time and start there. I had mm. an advantage here. So okay. from the response you gave to her first question, it seemed like South Africa was welcoming for you. Absolutely. Mm. So what would you say you did different that would make it that open for you? Uh, what did I do differently? Uh, I think I had an open mind. Um, mm. I think, first of all, when you go to a new space, um, it's essential. And Nigerians do this all the time. Nigerians thrive everywhere, mm. you know, but uh, specifically, I had an open mind and I was welcoming to... Uh, to the new space, the new culture, and you know, I had friends. I had Nigerians there who, mm -hmm. you know, I was. It was easy for me to plug in. Shout mm -hmm. out to my friend CJ, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, and you know, the African, the African in the diaspora mm. in South Africa, the African community, especially mm. the West African community mm. was very yeah. welcoming yeah. and you know, it was yeah. easy so for me to plug and play. How would you describe the difference between South African entertainment industry and Nigerian entertainment industry? Well, you know, the entertainment industry in South Africa started, especially the film industry, started way ahead of us. Mm. So they are a lot more advanced than the film industry here. Um, and it is better structured, mm. you know, so you go to a studio and you're like, oh, wow, mm. you know, <laughs> so they, they have everything they have and they have uh, they have investors who are ready to put their money where their mouth is of rather course. than, you know, as, yeah. as against here in Nigeria where, you know, you, you get a lot of stories, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it, in, in the little things, you know, mm. the, it, it was quite different. So what would you say is stopping us from getting there? Time. Time. You know, with, with time, we'll get there. You know, like I said, they started well ahead right, of us. Yeah. I'm saying, I don't know, maybe 50 mm. 
and years plus before years. Okay. plus years you okay know? would you bring it back to you your right. movies well, i have seen personally right. it's not a lot but i've seen a lot <laughs> yeah I haven't um, been a lot. <laughs> and you have a persona that i don't know if you are the one attracting them or the, the scripts are attracting you but it's all oh. about that like young fine boy type vibes you know a little player here He's and there maybe now. yeah but it's still it's still the sugar boy type you okay. know lover boy type mm. roles okay Is it? that's what i that's why i've noticed <laughs> oh you're associated to them okay, okay. Mm -hmm. but then on your social media and it seems like the people who know you on like a, apart from your script say right. very different like calm <laughs> in the house faithful married dad vibes which is not what we're getting on tv um so for that, that obviously is an interesting type of reality because a lot of the times when you're not, not with people who who know you they will address you like we see on scripts which is natural right, right. how do you interact with that type of um truth or reality well i think that's a testament of my uh acting skill <laughs> uh i i i, I you take enjoy off the cap and be yes, like or yes. do you well, let me even ask be more specific do you give that persona for your fans when you meet them off off set like do you act like that sugar because obviously that's what they're looking for yes you know so 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 i've learned that you know the fans don't want to meet the real you no they don't <laughs> they want to meet their fantasies yeah, they want yes. to meet this person that exactly. they've imagined in their head mm -hmm. so yeah you put up you know once in a while you put up that you know that yeah yeah that persona for them okay. to enjoy you okay you know okay. and then when you're when you're out of the public eye you know you're back to yourself so right. yeah I, I can be many different people okay. so i have a confession to make sure the men's club yeah. i said binge watching yesterday night at least i'm done with first that's the cardinal anyway. scene <laughs> i tried i tried i mean it's affecting my sleep but it's okay. <laughs> so i mean that's a really good one and i want i wanted to ask the character you played or the characters that are being portrayed in the men's club do you see yourself in any one of them hmm. well uh well, as an actor, mm -hmm. yeah, as an actor, you get a role. You have to find a point of connection to every role that you play. Mm. So obviously, you know, I was, I am able to find a meeting point between, for example, a Daniel and a uh, and a Lan Ray. So yes, you know, there's a meeting point. It might not be hundred percent, maybe mm. twenty, maybe thirty. We'll need to find out what that twenty percent is. But let's go on a very quick break, and when we come back, we'll carry on this conversation. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? Oh, yeah. and plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from my love we like. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And of course, Daniel Etim, F. Young is still here. Still here. Now, before we went on that break, you said we Larry. could find 20% mm. of <laughs> some of the characters. Or is it one or some? Well, all the characters mm. are very, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I, I'm sure people will want to know. Okay. What, what, what part constitutes that 20%? Well, if we are talking about the men's club, I play mm, a character yeah. called Lan Ray, <laughs> Taiwo, right? So mm -hmm. what part of it, uh, you know, do I relate with? Uh, well, Lan Ray is hardworking. I'm hardworking. Oh, goodness. Lan Ray is a geek. <laughs> I could be a geek. You, you know? could be. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat. I'm a goofball. Mm. You know? uh, Lan Ray... Lan Ray is passionate, he's romantic, mm. that's me, you know, mm. all of that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure that's like a 40% I like how already. you just like, Larry was, Larry was <laughs> throwing like punch Larry. as well. Are you yeah, I'm a fighter, man. I, I, could, I could fight for what I believe in. Okay, mm. okay, yeah. okay, but on a more, maybe say a little more serious note, right. in the men's club, there, there is the, uh, will I say, 
closet conversation that was portrayed a lot in in there right. and bringing it to today's world I, I i don't know if there's a correlation this is me trying to get into the closet without sure. being in the closet okay do men genuinely have conversations when somebody says something that's kind of like inappropriate or like you know I, i'm i have a side chick and is married or i i don't know i've I've, I've, I don't know, whatever it is. They are busy cautioning each other. Like, yes. Yeah, do do they do genuinely that? have a conversation that is Truthful. adamantly saying that this is wrong? Or do you people just brew it and be like, ah, guy, I'll fuck me, I don't know, man. Like, whatever. Like, what's the vibe, genuinely speaking? Oh, gosh. So, bro code, I'm not supposed to say, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell anyone. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, um, men are quite uh, sincere with each other mm. when they meet to talk. Okay. Um... I don't know how it works for women, but men are real to themselves and they mm. tell themselves as it is, mm. you know. And the closer you are to a brother, the more real you are with him and mm. the more you can tell him as it is, you know. So, yes, men will talk, men will tell you as it is. They would encourage you or discourage you depending on who the guy is or who mm. the friend is mm. and his idiosyncrasies. So it mm. depends on the individual. Okay, let me give you a, more, a bigger context. Let's say there's right. like four or five of you, yeah? Right. And there's somebody saying something inappropriate about a woman right. and he's saying it with confidence, right? right? right. So is it, is, is it more natural for a man to then call it out and say, guys, it's not really cool? Or would you just keep quiet? Because that's the perception we're under that yeah. even the good men are pretty silent. Oh, no. You know, uh, okay. we... we, we, we I wouldn't. Okay. Okay. Daniel wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I'm, I, if it's funny, I may laugh about it, but then my subconscious kicks mm. in, and then my 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 very sharp conscience mm. will start pricking me, and I'll be like, mm. actually, this isn't funny, guys. Right. Come on, let's let's let's. Okay, not our laugh time is this. almost mm. up, but let's talk a little bit about toxic masculinity before go we go. I, of course, I know you know what it's about. So, how do you think that is affecting what is playing out right now in the society, especially in Nigeria, and mm. how can we go beyond that? I think for the longest time, men were raised in a certain way, you mm -hmm. know, to be strong, to be, for lack of a better word, irresponsible, to be irresponsible with women mm -hmm. outside, you know, but to be responsible with your sisters mm -hmm. and your mother mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. you know. So, 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 uh, so over the years, right, we've grown to be, oh, don't, you know, don't show your emotions. Men do not cry. Mm -hmm. You know, men do not speak about emotions or, you know, men, men cannot be weak, you know. So, uh, so we've grown up learning to be men that way. And right now, because society is changing and women are changing as well, mm -hmm. men are finding it difficult to adapt and to cope because we've learned all our life to be a certain way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, happening now is we're seeing that clash of realities and mm -hmm. men are struggling, you know, so we so 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 we're having to unlearn yeah. many things that right. we've been taught You guys need to unlearn yeah. first, but, but we need to go unfortunately. Oh, yeah. no, we, we need to go. No. We need to go. <laughs> Thank you for watching and that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Remember you can join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or just tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Also send your opinions via WhatsApp to 90 Also watch Tea Time on Arrow to TV and in London on Ben Television. Vision. My thank you as always go to my interesting co anchor Sife Omai and Ife Oluo Shoke who had to step down and of course our guest Daniel. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please stay safe.